is a divalent element that occurs naturally in combination with other elements. Minerals such as beryl, aquamarine, and emeralds are amongst them. As a free element, it is steel gray, strong, lightweight, and brittle. The combination of its high flexural rigidity, thermal stability, thermal conductivity, and low density make beryllium metal a desirable aerospace material for aircraft components, missiles, spacecrafts, and satellites. Other industries that use beryllium are electronics, metal alloys, ceramics, glass and fiber optics, production of dental supplies, and prostheses manufacture, golfing equipment, and metal recycling. A major source of beryllium emissions into the environment is the combustion of fossil fuels. The commercial use of beryllium requires the use of appropriate dust control equipment and industrial controls at all times because of the toxicity of inhaled beryllium containing dusts. These can cause acute, chronic, and even life-threatening disease. Families living near a plant that uses beryllium are at risk. Family members may also be exposed to beryllium by gathering and washing the dirty clothes of an individual who is working with beryllium. It is federal regulation that workers not be exposed to more than 2 micrograms per meters cubed of beryllium in the air, averaged over an 8-hour workday. This regulation is unchanged since 1940s and may not be protective enough. The EPA regulation for the beryllium emissions in the air is limited to 10 grams in a 24-hour period. Very low concentrations of beryllium in the air can cause sensitization and disease. Important factors determining sensitization to beryllium after an exposure may include the total mass, size, number, and the surface area of the particles involved. Some individuals have a genetic susceptibility to beryllium sensitization or disease. A susceptible person develops a cell-mediated delayed hypersensitivity reaction after exposure. HLA-DP beta-1 gene with the supertypic marker glutamate 69 may increase the risk of disease for those exposed to beryllium by 2 to 20 fold. Skin exposure to beryllium may cause contact dermatitis, subacute granulomatous nodules, ulceration, and delayed wound healing. Lung disease is the most common and the most concerning. In acute disease, high levels of beryllium exposure can result in inflammation of the upper and lower respiratory tract and airways causing bronchiolitis, pulmonary edema, and chemical pneumonitis. Chronic beryllium disease, also called beryliosis, is more common than acute beryllium disease. The disease can progress to pulmonary hypertension, fibrosis, pneumothorax, and the development of non-caseating granulomas. Beryllium sensitization and beryliosis can occur within 50 days of first exposure in modern industry. Some cases of beryliosis don't develop until 30 to 40 years after exposure has ceased. On average, beryliosis takes at least 6 to 15 years after exposure to develop into clinically significant respiratory disease. The International Agency for Research on Cancer has classified beryllium and beryllium compounds as carcinogenic to humans, and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency has classified inhaled beryllium as a probable human carcinogen. Patients with beryliosis may present with a variety of respiratory and systemic symptoms such as nonproductive cough, fatigue, exertional dyspnea, weight loss, fever, and myalgias. Possible chest radiograph findings include nodular diffuse infiltrates, diffusely linear infiltrates, and hyalur adenopathy. Possible pulmonary function test findings include lower forced vital capacity and diffusion capacity for carbon monoxide, and a restrictive or obstructive or mixed pattern may be observed. Once you suspect chronic beryllium disease, the next step is to perform a beryllium lymphocyte proliferation test. Two positive test results define sensitization. Patients with positive blood results typically undergo bronchoscopy, bronchial alveolar lavage, and transbronchial biopsy. Prednisone often stabilizes the disease and improves symptoms. The lowest dose of prednisone that prevents disease progression should be maintained. Adjuvant therapy includes bronchodilators, diuretics, and oxygen. Examples of districts that are at risk include District 1, District 2, District 3, and District 13.
Worker safety advised. <laughs>